given access to receive messages of clarity, guidance, and love. As channeler, psychotherapist, and author, Noemi Grace has an intimate dialogue with the divine on your behalf. Lisa Berry intuitively listens and expresses the deep questions on people's hearts and elevates the conversation while Noemi Grace channels divine wisdom and expansive answers to your deepest questions. Each show's themes are related to self-love, self-healing, relationships, and personal struggles, offers tools that will lead to sacred stability and help you find your best solutions. Join us now as we give you access to angels and grace. Mm, and access indeed today's show is all about on this October 31st. Hello, Noemi. Hello, Lisa. Yes, we're going into the shadow <laughs> and, and finding the gifts within. So um figured we'd capitalize on the energy of the day um, yes. and bring bring the light and see see what gifts are in the shadow. Mm, and that's why today's title is how to liberate the gifts that we've put into the shadow, not our shadow, not my shadow, but the shadow. And I like that we used that specific word because yes, we don't, it's not our shadow lurking around. <laughs> and, um, and no, I mean, I just love how you brought this, this topic to mind. It, I, I have to invite you to share the story because it was so cl clever, your turnaround and your thought pattern on this. Okay, which story are we talking about? The oh, voice story? about the shadow. Or? Just the shadow itself, how you came up with the idea to go with this this theme. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I I thought, hmm, Halloween. Okay, it, it's, it's not a holiday that I do much with, but I know that there's a lot, there's a lot um, of people that allow themselves feel comfortable with the shadows what's in the shadows on halloween it, it, we make light of it you know like ghosts and skeletons and and things and and um i was taking my walk this morning and there were all kinds of instructions at people's houses on the side streets um because i live on a more main street so there's nothing going to happen on my street but and um you know like oh here's what to do with the monsters today and all of this stuff and they, uh, people people are really sort of embrace the shadow on Halloween. And I mean, nobody, I don't think too many people really want a big skeleton in their house, but then on the front lawn on Halloween, people enjoy it. So, so it was like, ah, oh. so I was opening up to what about the shadow? And we had done a show already about collaborating with the shadow. Mm -hmm. And then I got the clarity that there's gifts in the shadow. There's good stuff in the shadow. And um, that's, that's where we're going to go. We're going to, there's gems. We're going to mine the shadow and get those gems today. I love that. I was so drawn to this topic because as you and I went deeper in what we're going to be um, sharing today, I, I, these questions, I'm going to, I'm not going to read the whole show description, but I'm going to read these really valuable points because I was really thinking, okay, what, what gifts have I put in the shadow? Um, and I couldn't, it wasn't, it wasn't easy for me to find them, but when we asked these questions or when we kind of identified with um, what that might look like, then it started coming to mind. So I'm gonna share these, these mm. one, two, three, four bullet points from our show description, everyone. Um, and how, how did these gems get put into our, sh our shadow now, right? Not just the shadow, but, and here are some of the ways you might identify. We, ag we have agreed with a box that other put us into and it has become our comfort zone that one made me think of a few things um, another one is we've had a glimpse of our gifts but they felt too big for us or we weren't quite ready to embrace them so I like that one mm -hmm. and another one is we've judged parts of ourselves because they didn't meet our standards Ooh, that would be in the shadow <laughs> I think we and, can all relate to that one <laughs> And then the fourth one we thought, or we felt inadequate in different parts of our lives. So, Noemi, those those four questions really helped me to go in. And I thought, those are that, those are great mm. uh, tools, question tool questions. And so, if you know, as we we go there, we go, okay. So, can we imagine feeling safe enough to stop hiding those gifts and bring them out into the life? And how would our world change? What would it look like? And what would it, you know, what would it take to do this? Because those are some pretty big things. Yeah. Let's take, just take one of them, Noemi. We've, we've judged parts of ourselves because they didn't meet our standards. So imagine let, like bringing shining light on that. Like, and where would we begin? 
So I, I do have a story that you want to share that maybe you, that you've done this and have been successful at bringing into the light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 you know, my story, um, probably sort of touches on each of them, but, um, so I never, I never liked my voice. Growing up, my sister, I'm the oldest, and my middle sister, there's three of us, and she has lovely voice, and we grew up in church, and she could reach all those high notes and the hymns, and she could do this, and then if we sang any kind of, we, we'd we sing, you know, pop soon, tunes and kind of pretend we were a rock band, and we'd sing <laughs> things, and she could reach the, the notes, and, and I could never get there, and because um, my voice was is not like hers, and, and, and I... I I sort of kind of interesting. I, you know, I don't often identify, and I'm putting air quotes with envy, but I was definitely, and I'm sure that there's plenty there. Oh, the divine said, oh, really? So, sure, there's plenty there for me. Um, but I was envious of her voice, and I didn't like my voice. And as I, you know, I went to, through puberty, and my voice got more resonant, but also deeper, I just, I could, I could sing a really great alto, but I can't hit those notes. And I, so I didn't like my voice. And um, so for many years, I didn't like my voice. And I didn't realize what the implication of that was, how it's only in retrospect that I realized I didn't like my voice. And as the more that as time went on, I had less and less of a voice. When I was a kid, I had plenty of voice. Um, but as time went on, I, I became quieter and more introverted and um, less voicing. I was going to say less opinionated, but I don't think that ever happened, but less voicing <laughs> of opinion. And um, and so it took some work and, and I used to do these, so this is a kind of a long story, but I used to, when I used to do my answering recordings for my voicemail, I would, I would change it up. So, hi, this is Noemi. And I would start to put this fake voice on and people would, would kind of say, who is that person? Is that the person I know? <laughs> you know. But so oh. I started to laugh at myself for doing that, and I started to say, I started to to realize that my voice is my voice is is really it's good. There's nothing wrong with my voice. I mean, I have a voice, and I started to have a voice in in relationships and in my life, and and um, just you know, I in talking to Lisa, I was realizing if I didn't. If I kept my voice silent, we wouldn't be having this radio show. And and I wouldn't be sharing the divine wisdom that that's the divine is 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 gifting me with, is is telling to me I wouldn't be able to share it because I need my voice. So now I really love my voice, even though sometimes I have to say when I listen to recordings, I go, Oh, let me let me work on that voice a little bit more. Maybe I need voice lessons, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, but I'm grateful to have my have my voice. Because I can, I've been gifted with the ability to give voice to to the divine. So for that, I am grateful. Oh, seeing if you kept it in the box, it, yes, we wouldn't be mm. able to hear the the, the the wisdom gifts that you bring. I yeah, guess. thank you. It's funny how we don't yeah. know those little stories. We think you know they they sound so small and little, like oh, I don't like my voice, but then it just really ripples out into our lives. And um, I mine will be a, a little mini one, but. I'm jumping to the the point of, of my story. I used to, um, I love numbers. I have a great relationship with numbers. And when I was a little, little child, didn't even know how to do math yet, but I knew it. I knew how to do it without knowing how to do it. And I, mm. I, I had this skill with numbers. So I, I remember running out and saying to mom, mom, I know how to do long division. And I remember her and she's so loving and so supportive. And it was just caught me off guard. She goes, oh, you, you did. You taught yourself. How did you teach yourself? I said, well, I just know how to do it. And and she will, well, show me mm. how I said, well, I can't show you how, I just know the answers. And and she said, well, you're going to have to be oh, able to wow. show the teacher. You know, you're going to have to show the teacher how you did your work. And I went, well, why? If I'm coming up with the right answer, why do I have to explain how I know? And and then I, I suddenly felt like, does she think I'm cheating? Does she, um, is it, am I faking? Will it go away? Maybe I don't really know because I didn't know how to do it, but I knew I was doing it because it, it happened so fast in the little mind, right? And so... I never mm. started, I didn't want to answer in school because I thought, oh, they're going to make, tell me, like, I'm going to have to show my teacher how I got there. And so I became mm. really afraid of knowing the answers and not trusting myself wow. in other areas of my life because I thought, well, how, what if I know 
the answer to something else, but I don't know how to say how I know it. And then they'll think I'm lying. And it became, I had quite the complex. I was afraid to share. Mm. I knew I was right. I kept it inside and it went, came with me for quite a long time. Um, and then what ha- ended up happening was I thought, oh, now I have to spend all this time on learning how to show somebody it. But then it actually started making me more confused and la- um, did not, uh, not trusting myself. Uh, so mm. it was a very interesting path that how I, I just was looking at your story and how that rippled out into so many ways. And I didn't realize, you know, until you're saying that story that yes, mine actually rippled out beyond just numbers. It came to everything. I was a little bit like, Oh, better not say that they might not, you know, if I can't prove it, mm. you know, I have to have that evidence. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. and you know, yes, you would question your own intuition. You know, when you know, when you just know something and you don't know how you know it, but you know it and you know that you know it. Yes, exactly. Wow. So trusting intuition, that's a thats a, a gift I think a lot of us might have put in into the shadow. And that gift is just there waiting mm, for us to Yes, liber- that's liberate. a good one. That might be. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good so stuff. Wanna- yes, I would love to yeah. if you could share the pre-channeled messages with all of us. Yeah, our so that we might be. Chat will be right up to commercial, so let me just yes. grab a swig here. Mm. So, step fully into the light of you. We would like to speak to you about what you call the shadow. So, I actually am going to interrupt myself. For anyone who's listening to the, this for the first time, um, this what Lisa calls the pre-channel messages. I sit down and I ask Source what they want to say about the topic that Lisa and I are feeling called to have a show about and they always have something pretty amazing to say so and i'm so grateful so step fully into the light of you we would love to speak to you about what you call the shadow that part of you that you disallow and have trouble embracing or even acknowledging how did you become separated and estranged from your shadow self in the physical world you cannot cut your shadow off in certain lighting you'll experience your shadow and see its presence And most of you pay no mind to your physical shadow. Its presence doesn't bother you. Yet this is not so with your psychological and spiritual shadow. For you, this has become a place like your mythical Pandora's box, a place holding things about you and your experience that you don't want to acknowledge or look at. Many of you think that your shadow holds only negative or dark experiences and thoughts. Yet, if you could shine the light on on, on the shadow, The darkness, if you shine the light on darkness, it is always transformed. And if you are willing to open the shadow's box that you carry with you, you would see that there are many things inside which are not dark at all. Anything about yourself that you cannot accept or that you deem unacceptable to others who matter to you, you have placed in shadow. Many of your greatest gifts are living in that box, tucked away not to be seen or acknowledged. Some of you put your intelligence in shadow. If you think others are threatened by your brilliance, you don't want to appear too smart. Many of you who have artistic, musical, or other gifts have put them in shadow as children when adults told you not to focus your attention on them. You disowned and disallowed some of what is most true about you. You have learned not to shine too brightly because it may highlight another's dimness. Yet, when you freely shine your light, The light doesn't stop where your body or energy ends. The light shines brightly, reaches others, and invites those who are in dimness to step more into their own light. Your light, your gifts never diminish another's light or gifts. And if anyone feels diminished by them, it is because they have tucked their own gifts and light so far away that they have a hard time accessing them. And when you shine, you embrace your gifts It is a reminder to them that they have not allowed their gifts to shine. Yet, when you shine, you invite others to shine. When you embrace all of you, including those gifts which may seem too big for you, you allow others to relax into their own light and gifts. Embrace all of you, even those things about you that you you think can't possibly be you because you don't feel good enough for them. Embrace all your gifts and allow them to shine. Pull the gems out of the shadow and be with them. Allow them to be. Start by acknowledging those things you don't feel adequate for and those things that others have told you you'd never succeed in, although you enjoyed them and they felt natural to you. 
Take the lid off the shadow's box and you will see some painful experiences which we can help you integrate into the whole of you. And you will also see things about you that are beautiful, whole, and precious that you have rejected because you felt unworthy or you were trying to please others. It's time to take those gems out of the shadow, dust them off, and let them shine. Until you do, you will not feel complete and whole. Something will always feel missing. Embracing all of you may seem scary, and that's okay. We're here to assist you in the embracing of all of you and the gifting of yourself with all of your uniquely special gifts. We encourage you to shine your light, the light that is uniquely you. When you step fully into the light of you, you will feel more comfortable in a home than you ever have. Own all of you. That is a gift. You are the gift. Be the gift to yourself. And you encourage others to be the gift to themselves. From there, a whole new light awaits you. Even if nothing changes externally, you will become fully you internally. And over time, your life will begin to align more with who you fully are. And this will happen naturally and comfortably without a lot of effort and will bring you great joy and great love. We are here to assist you always. We are complete. Namaste. Wow. This is so self-loving, you know, encouraging self-love. Mm. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll go off to the commercials, but when we come back, I will be picking up the word and asking us to explore those parts that we have rejected and are coming into mm. being comfortable and embracing them. Mm-hmm. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. This is Kathy Beal, host of Celestial Compass, featuring astrology you can use. Celestial Compass points you to what's going on in the sky and what you can do with it down here on Earth. We also explore fun, effective, and cosmic tools for navigating this adventure we call life. Join me the first and third Monday of the month at 5 p.m. Eastern Time for Celestial Compass. It's enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. My loves, you know you're here as a soul-led leader to transform this world through the sharing of your passions and gifts. You are here to be in your warrior of light and align your business with your highest self. I'm Roslyn Fong of the show Activate Your Soulgasmic Business. Let's elevate your business to the next level expansive level. I invite you to flow into a business soul alignment discovery call with me at rosalindfung.com. That's R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. Fun as in have some fun, F-U-N-G. And let's see how I can best hold space for you to align your highest self, magnetize your dream clients and monetize on your soul mission. I can't wait to connect. If I could be you. And you could be me. For just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Oh, welcome back, everyone. We're here at Access to Angels and Grace. We've got Noemi Grace sharing her pre-channels and upcoming channeling. Well, <laughs> with myself, Lisa Berry here. I just love listening. So many things... Um, come to mind, you know, when we're, when we're discussing these things. And mm. 
Um, one thing I, I just was re reminded, seeing this is where things are going to come up for our listeners, and we'd love for you to share with us as well. You can always find us at Facebook um, is one great place, or YouTube. You know, I just want to invite people to not forget about YouTube because I know it's that's a video station, but, we, you know, there's our podcast is there on Ohm Times, um, and you can also leave comments there for us and we can find them. But, Noemi, um, I'm a nutritionist, and 10 years ago, um, we're give or take, my mother passed away and my entire, you know, career was dedicated to helping mm. her do, you know, with nutrition and health. And um, she had passed and I was writing a seminar that I was about to deliver. And I just, I, I slammed my laptop lid down and I had a temper tantrum and went, I'm not doing this anymore. I've a nutritionist failed me. I'm not a good nutritionist. I couldn't help my mom, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right? oh. And mm. I, I literally stopped. I halted being a nutritionist for about four years, just like that. It was, wow. and, and I hid those gifts because I, I'm, a, I'm a really good one. And so uh, when I was able to step back into it, like take it, I, I relegated it to the shadows. Like, no, I'm, mm. I, and so it, it's so funny when I, I wasn't, I never thought of that yet um, because I was thinking, you know, we sometimes, I think we think we place those gifts in the shadow, but sometimes it's um, out of response. It's out of fear, pain, um, mm -hmm. oh, failure, yeah. and anger. And so one question that was kind of coming up to my mind when I thought, I was like, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful if, if we could have Noemi channel something here, <laughs> is, is when when we've, we have, we are aware that, yes, we've placed something there because we're, it's too painful to bring it out. So mm. how can we get around or, or angry? I mean, I always think of angry as pain, but when we're just so angry and we think, no, I don't want it to come out because it's going to bring me more pain. Well, how, where could we, how could we begin to open up and, and even shine a little bit of light on that? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's, you've brought in the gift and the pain together, which is, mm. you know, um, I think there's always some pain and we wouldn't put it in the shadow, you know, for me, for me, you know, with the voice, you know, the pain that I, I tried and I couldn't make it. And of course, this is a very small pain compared to ah, the pain of the loss of your mother. And oh, you taking all that on that, that as a nutritionist, you should have been able to yeah. heal her or get her yeah. to heal herself and, and, and. Um, that's that's such a huge, huge pain, you know, and so many people wouldn't ever come back to that. Nutrition has, they'd be like, nutrition has failed me. And um, and I failed my mother. And so the pain of that, you know, takes courage the to pain bring chain. back that gift, you know. What's that? Yes, the pain chain. <laughs> pain the chain. chain. Yes. Mm. Like a whole Never chain heard of that <laughs> that uh, that that phrase. Interesting pain chain. I like it. I like you know when things rhyme. Um, so, but that pain chain. I mean, so there's there was just so much pain there that you took on, and so much that you were putting all that weight on yourself of of what you you know like that pain you know causes suffering. You know there was so much suffering for you. Um, because you, you, so Alberto Valaldo, who brought in the, the Moon Aiki writes to the, the Western world, you know, he said that um, one thing he had learned with the, the Incan shamans was that suffering occurs when we attach a story to our pain. And the story brings us into that suffering. So the, your story was you should have been able to cure your mother or extend her life with, with, with excellent nutrition and and that was not what happened and that was the story that caused you to feel inadequate shameful um blame yourself for some huge things and so you know that suffering that we're we have the suffering and so we want to keep the the gift there you being an excellent nutritionist have helped a lot of people and you want to keep the gift in in the shadow because we see that it has caused us some suffering. You just helped to help highlight that question. It's how to gear, that was so perfect. And thank you for your em emotional support there. And and what I'm hearing is mm, how, to, how do we keep course. the gift in the light while we uh, heal the, the, pa um, the pain? Because mm. we have to honor that we have pain 
So we just can't yes. go, oh, well, yeah, keep the gift in the light, you know, but so how do we keep the gift in the light while we heal the pain? Yes, yes. We'll bring it back into the light. We may temporarily put it um, in yes. shadow, right? But how do we bring that out and sit with it and be with it? And as we're healing, yes. um, which will help us, right? You being able to bring that gift of of nutrition, healthy nutrition, and, and, and sit with it and be with it. Make sure that you're taking good care of yourself nutritionally and, and, and then help other people that crossing your path. You know, if you're, if you're disallowing that part of yourself, you might not even comment to people, even if they, you know, say, oh, this is my diet. You might not say things that you might have That's said exactly before because... Happened. You're right. That's exactly. Yeah. I just went on like, no, yeah. I have no say. I don't. You can do whatever you want. Oh, is that your diet? Well, there you go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. If someone's eating, yeah. you know, has a medical condition and they're eating food that's going to exacerbate it, you know, feeling like, who am I to say anything? Yes. You know, so, exactly. um, so how do we, how do we, yeah, we how do we either shine the light on the, the gift or as bring the feeling. gift back in the light? Bring yes. the gift. So we have to acknowledge the gift i assume mm. right you know you're a really excellent nutritionist and um thank you you know and so you have to acknowledge that you know for, for me with the voice you know it's like i i have a i have a powerful voice mm. that's you know when we were kids i could scream to somebody way down the block you know and stuff <laughs> and they would hear me <laughs> where my sister wouldn't with the beautiful voice she couldn't, you know, she'd say, oh, there's my friend. And I'd scream, hey. Yeah. So, <laughs> I love that. That's a gift. <laughs> yeah. So, so, okay. So, let me, we'll just, uh, it's a perfect timing here to uh, connect with the divine and get more guidance and more wisdom and tools to help us along our path. So, I'm just going to do my usual process, which is grab a swig of water. Because a lot will be coming through my voice oh, that I am, nice. I am loving having, and um, and um, so he moistened my vocal cords, <laughs> and then I'm going to get a, a little bit silent for a few seconds, greet the divine, and turn it over to them. Thank you, Divine, for your help with this matter, helping us to bring the gifts, acknowledge them, bring them out of the shadow, bring them into the light while we're healing, while we're healing the wounds that have happened that have caused us to reject the gifts and realize um, that they are our gifts and they have so much positive. And how, how do we bring them back in from where we judge them and place them into the light. We thank you for this question. We love this question. We love when you bring anything into the light because the light we are talking about here is your unique light, your resonant light, that light that is truly you, uniquely you, that is the true essence of you shining. When the true essence of you shines, you have a unique light. You have a unique vibrant light that is you. And that light you can share with the world, but you can also enjoy it and appreciate it. And so recognize that your light is yours. It's it's yours. It's a little bit different than the next person's. It is based in divine light, but it brings in your uniqueness, your the aspects of you that are unique. So someone with a gift like Noemi Grace to be able to listen and 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 speak what she listens is going to have a slightly different light than someone who can tell tell people what, the future or can read the cards and really have the understanding and the wisdom or someone who can take a spiritual passage and enlighten it for so many people. 
we all, you all have your different, different lights. And each one of us has that. And each one of us, Noemi is Grace is talking now. <laughs> okay. Okay, we will give space to her. I, I really like this. I, I, I'm talking to the divine and <laughs> speaking my own words. And so uh, it doesn't usually happen. But oh, I love how we each have our unique light. It reminds me of in chemistry class where we used to have every element. They would have different colors of flames when you burn them. And I, I would purposely try to mix them up and and um, and get the purple and, and the green together and all of that. But that's what I was where I was going with this. And I'm going to turn it back over to the divine. And um, <laughs> that was the first time ever here on Access to Angels and Grace. <laughs> no, I've never I've never done I, sometimes my mind goes to something, but but I was I was enjoying that Aww. that memory in, in high school where I got into trouble a little bit because I was corrupting the elements. But anyway, <laughs> back to the divine. And we we enjoyed that diversion of Wemmy Grace, and we give space to that. And we gave space to your voice, which you are owning, and we acknowledge that. And so, for all of you, you're, you have so many gifts, many that you are not even aware of, that you would be find remarkable, and you think yourselves as unremarkable in so many ways, and in many ways you're remarkable and uniquely gifted. And so, being able to acknowledge that, first recognize you have gifts. If you think you are ungifted, if you are that one person or that one of the few that has no gifts, we will tell you that you are gifted beyond, way beyond what you imagine. And so, start by acknowledging, I have gifts. I am gifted. I have gifts. I don't know what they are, but I have gifts and I want to know what they are. And so, acknowledge the gifts. If you don't know what they are, acknowledge that they exist and be willing and interested to see the gifts, to bring those gifts into your unique, beautiful, bright light. And those of you who do know your gifts, and you know something of your gifts, recognize when you have diminished your gift because that puts it in the shadow. When you are not holding it in your in the light and you are not shining the light through the gift you have put the gift in the shadow you have diminished the gift where are you diminishing the gift recognize when you are diminishing recognize when you are saying oh not good enough or oh yeah yeah but you may receive a compliment yes that's true yeah but but i i you know i just got lucky that time or the things that you say all of you have the things you say to diminish yourself Start to become aware of where you're diminishing yourself. That is where you have put a gift in shadow. Where are you diminishing yourself? Where are you judging yourself? What gift is there for you? What gift is there that you are not seeing because you are judging? And step back and ask us to help you shine the light on that. And even ask for the divine light to be shining on that and to be bringing all of that gift that you are unaware of into the light. And when you are aware that you are putting, you are putting your gifts in shadow, ask for our help. When you are suffering, when you are in pain, when you are in the struggle, because somehow you feel the gift has failed you, or you have not been gifted enough, or, or you may have thought too highly of yourself, and, and now you realize that you were not as high as you thought, and all the stories that you tell yourself, and the ways in which you create your suffering and add to the suffering. It is already there. Start to recognize that you are putting that gift in the shadow. Start to ask us for help in bringing it out. It is okay to have not been perfect in your gift, in your presentation of the gift, in your sharing of the gift. That is the process, the journey of becoming more fully you. Then you will be perfect as you. You will be perfectly you. And it may not look like perfection that you may have a standard of, but it will be perfectly you. And so, love yourself enough to recognize where you are judging, where you're diminishing, where you're putting yourself in the shadow, and ask for our help. We love you so much. We are complete. Namaste. Hmm. It's kind of fun. <laughs> 
That, yes, yes. I, I like I the word chemistry class in school. <laughs> and I used to judge myself if something like that happened. Ooh, I'm not pleasant enough, but you know, it, it's 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 me. Right, right, yes. It, I, I thought that was the first time in history we can add that into there. I like that one. <laughs> no. the, uh, the Occasionally one sentence comes out and you can tell because I, I will use the I won't speak in the plural. I'll be speaking in the in the singular oh, and a sentence right. comes out because I'm thinking it and I'll say I, you know, or, you know, um, and, and so you'll know that. But uh, not to be listening for it. But in case you notice, that's that's me speaking. <laughs> Oh, I love that. That see, you were not going to diminish your light. You were working no, in partnership. And, they, and, and <laughs> like I said, they gave space for it for for me to express my voice. So I thought that was really sweet. <laughs> and of all things, yes, exactly. And I love that you're recognizing that because that was about yes, expressing your voice. Oh, that was so perfect. How time they have a good sense of not humor, but um. Oh, the divine has a great sense of humor. Yes, showmanship. There you go. Showmanship. <laughs> but I really do love um, that the, the diminishing part has come up because um, there's a mm. few examples given like, yeah, but or um, I just got lucky. You know, that's that's an interesting one where mm. I think a lot of people who are so they're so blessed. Maybe they have a lot of abundance in their life. Maybe they always win something or they're they just always every time they try anything, they're just mm. really great, mm. right off the bat. And and we do sometimes, we don't want other people to think, feel badly about themselves. So we make the decision that, well, that person might feel badly. So I'll diminish myself uh, because I think they will feel bad. And we don't even know if the other person would feel bad or not. Mm. Like, mm, we mm, diminish mm, ourselves. Yes, sometimes. and that was in the, yeah. yeah, the pre-channel message covered that too. You know, how we, but when we allow our light to shine, we invite others to do the same. And, and yes. it doesn't make someone feel more dim. It makes them you know, we bring light to it, so. Yes, yeah, the, the example, the example of light. And I think that was, I know we're, yeah. we're sneaking off to our second commercial break, our final commercial break, but when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll explore the shadow work a little bit more. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds, Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spot that activates your soulgasmic business by tuning in on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain. Join me for your light language activation and let's magnetize and monetize. So I'm a cat and I just moved in with this new human and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Ooh, I've been I've been intuitively listening to it. The questions on the hearts of our listeners. Mm, 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 <laughs> I, mm. I'm gonna love jump how you do that. Ah, uh, I'm gonna jump into this question. I'm gonna set the stage, which is funny because this is what I'm literally speaking of. How to create an environment in which we can bring these gifts out? And the reason why this has come to mind, I can feel people, hmm. you know, thinking, yeah, I really 
want to share my voice or share these gifts or do my thing. But um, there's two things that really need to, to be created, I would say, or felt would be they have to feel safe to do so. And it has to feel good, you know, like some kind of payoff here. Right. So, mm. so how do we create, this would be the, the channeled message request is how do we create an environment where we do feel safe and ourselves enough, fun, playful enough, uh, creative and uh, creative enough mm. to reveal and bring these out of the shadow and out of the box and reveal these gems. Hmm. Oh, and just to add on that, because I remember being a little girl and or or watching other little children do this and they want to show you something. They've drawn a picture, right? Or they they have mm -hmm. they created a little play that they want to put on for you or something. Like they were so excited. Or they want to show you their favorite baby, you know, their doll or toy or something. But they always go they they smack you on the leg, you know, and tap you like, Oh, oh, do I have your attention? Are you interested? Do you do you care enough? Can I show you something? Like little kids they just know how to set that environment so that they get the mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, You're you're not listening. Wait, you know, they can tell you like, hey, this is not a good environment. I need I need to have the light on me. <laughs> so how well, can we as, as they assert themselves, right? They haven't Ooh. they're not they don't power and shame if they're healthy children you know they'll emotionally healthy they've grown up emotionally healthy enough they will assert themselves and say hey you're not listening whereas as an adult we might say oh they don't want to hear what i have to say and and yes. we just diminish ourselves and we kind of go into the corner and um, so so this is you know so that's the environment if the child is growing up in a loving environment, that environment is safe enough for them to assert themselves. And um, when we diminish, we're not asserting, or we're asserting that we're less than. Mm, asserting so, that we are enough. Yeah. We're not enough. Yes. Yeah, so if we diminish, but when we recognize that we are more than enough. Mm hmm. Ah. Mm hmm. So we must assert. Every time I hear that I'm enough, I go, I'm more than enough. You know, I don't <laughs> stop yes. there. Don't want to just be enough. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah, so. what are these stages of being able to, like, how to create an, an environment where, yes, that where we can assert that we are more than enough? Mm. Okay. And claim it and, and, and step into it, you know, not just I'm more than enough, kind of like and, and not live it. <laughs> right. But yes, claim it. Mm hmm. Claim it and live it. OK. Hmm. Grab that swig of water again. Mm. Here I am promising the divine I won't veer off. <laughs> that was a little fun, but I really I want to be of service to to the divine. Um, and no judgment about any of it, because what's the, that doesn't bring more light. It, that's diminishing. So, yeah. Mm, we appreciate this question about environment as so many times we focus on it, you focus on you we focus on you in our communication with you but the environment is so vitally important in the environment you thrive or you shrivel up you contract and shrivel and the environment that we would like you all to be in is one of thriving but not thriving at the ego level thriving of, oh i am doing this i'm doing that i've achieved this i've achieved that not that that thriving, we're talking about a thriving that is equivalent to you being fully you and, and you owning you fully and you sharing you fully and being all of you. And that means those gifts and that means whatever's in the shadow that you can integrate it, whether it is painful, whether it is painful and hard or whether it is beautiful and gifted and, and brilliant all of those that you can integrate all of that into a whole fully integrated you and the environment is important because it either encourages or discourages it either helps 
or it hinders. And so in the environment, first thing we would suggest is to take take note of the environment, take note of the environment in which you live, which includes so many things. It includes your comfort zone. It includes those who are close to you with whom you feel comfortable or maybe not comfortable, but they are close to you. Take stock of the environment. Where is it supportive? Where is it nurturing? Where is it encouraging you to be more you? And where is it discouraging? Where is it diminishing? Where is it starving you? And in those places, in those areas, what can you do differently? Look at that. It may feel too big to make a change there, but there is always a small change and the smallest change, which is to return to you in connection with us. There is always the opportunity for you to receive divine love, for you to stop and say, I don't know what to do here. Please give me your love. And we delight to give our love, to shine the love, to fill you with love. And when we grace, we have given her a practice in the morning where she sits and she offers her heart to our heart and she receives our heart into her heart and she receives divine love and she receives divine joy and all so many gifts, grace and peace and so much into her heart. And so that is creating the internal environment, which is in the heart. In the heart, what does your heart say? What does it speak? What is the message? What is the voice of the heart? What is it speaking? Receiving our love will help you to create the internal environment. Then if the external environment doesn't match, the more that you receive our love, the more that you receive our peace, the more that you receive our joy, our grace, the more that you are able to receive you. And with all of this receiving of you and us and all of these divine attributes that are available to you, if the external environment doesn't match that environment that you are creating within, you will become empowered to change, to step out of that environment in some way or to create space within that environment for you to shine, for you to become more you, for you to express you, for you to embrace those gifts and share them. And so it, this may be, depending on your external environment, a small shift, or it may be a large shift, but it all starts with a small step, the small step to receive yourself in the receiving of us. There's so much that can you can receive. You want to create something, receive yourself, receive us. And in the receiving of us, you can receive yourself. Do not receive us and see us as separated from you. The great divine, you can receive the great divine, and yet you are so small and insignificant. We are our seed is inside all of you. You have all received the seed of divinity and you have received the seed of divine love. And so connect, make the connection, connect those endpoints and receive us and receive all the many gifts. And as you change the internal environment, as that becomes more and more nurturing, as that becomes more safe, as that becomes more expressive of you, the external environment has to shift. The external environment, you will be able to shift in that environment much more easily. It will not be such a struggle because you will be clear. And in that clarity, you will have the strength of being who you are to be able to do what is necessary for you. We have so, such great appreciation for all of you. And we are asking you to start appreciating you more. We're grateful for this question and that for this opportunity. In great love, we are complete. Namaste. Mm. Mm, I love that it came up with look around at your environment first. Is it supportive? Mm -hmm. Is it nurturing? Is it encouraging? Because you're right. If, if, if say, you know, we, okay, we're like, oh, I have a gift and it's been diminished and, and it's in the shadow and I want to bring it out. But we look around first, say, ooh, is it safe? And if it's not, and we can recognize that quite easily, like, wow, I, I'm not feeling supportive or nurturing, encouraging. And if we go mm. ahead and, and do it anyways, then we're, we might end up stuffing it further back into the shadows, even darker and darker. So 
Mm. I love that by what is the voice of the heart of the internal environment. Yes. When that is comfortable and nurturing and safe, it shifts the external one just by doing that. That was brilliant. Well, well done, Source. I loved that part. (laughs) (laughs) We have an A plus to Source. So I I love that part, you know, because I'm thinking, what are they going to say? You know, like... uh, you know, clean up your clutter or something, you know, <laughs> which I hope not, because yes. I have I have to admit that there's pockets of clutter in my house. Um, <laughs> what they what they focused on that internal create the internal environment where you can be full of you and, and, and how the divine is there to assist us in receiving. When we receive the divine, we receive ourselves more fully and we we receive and there was that piece about not being seeing ourselves as separated right so we don't see the great divine and the little the little um the little me and um we see that there's a connection when we receive the divine we can receive ourselves in that and then we create that internal environment so then we can shift the external environment even if it's a big shift that's necessary we're we're becoming more fully us on the inside we're comfortable with that it's easier yes. to make that leap of faith. And what I love the most is that it, it really, we, we're talking directly about namaste. The light in me sees the light in you. And when we mm. see the light in ourselves, we are, then we can see the light in the external world. It, it literally is namaste. I thought, oh, how beautiful. <laughs> it is. Mm, and they say namaste. Because <laughs> <So, laughs> the divine is always seeing us in them and them in us. So yes. so I, they end the, mess, the transmission with namaste when they talk to me. And I just appreciate that. Wow. Yes, it was the first time it. I was like, namaste, really? Really? <laughs> Really. The light in you acknowledges the light in me. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it really is a good, that's almost like a beautiful mantra for someone who might be working on some of these things. You know, like you mentioned that, you, um, or I guess divined it, <laughs> that you have a practice, that Noemi has a practice. And and it is, it is something that we want to consciously... Mm offer ourselves that that nurture that light seeing the light and being seen by ourselves first so that Mm. yeah this that Mm. love is there and present and i think we can truly begin to love those things that you know like they are gifts they've been tucked away but they are in that box and once we can open that box and just offer this light and say oh i see you again oh look at you and remember you oh like when you know when you open up a little fun little box you're like oh i used to love this (laughs) like a memory box or something this yes. thing, you know, like something your your mother gives you or <laughs> your grandmother or something. Here, no, look what I found. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. But, so um, I think that's mm. very helpful for people to hear that. I think, and and just going back to those 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 four points, you know, like where where have we agreed and said yes, but it wasn't even our own yes to be put into mm. this box so that others might be comfortable or, or ourselves and, and mm, uh, maybe mm, mm. Well, the what, original what, points. Yeah. Yeah. The original ones. And, and what little gifts have we maybe seen like, Oh, I did have that, but then oop, not ready yet. Not ready. But that just maybe means the environment needs to be internal environment needs to be set up a little bit more for you to shine. Mm, mm. Yeah. It was like, it was, this, you know, setting up of the internal environment of just sort of envisioning almost like a, you know, having a meditation cushion in there and, and sitting and, and oh me <laughs> receiving yes. divine love. And, and I liked how it wasn't a focus on, okay, I need to change. It wasn't like a, yeah. let's bring in the feng shui of the external. You know, it was like, it wasn't this, this focus on the external. It was a focus on receiving mm-hmm. our heart to yes. God's heart. God's heart to my heart. And there's more to the practice, but that that's how I started. And and receiving the divine heart every morning. And this is so, oh, it's wonderful. And and so in that receiving, right? And not in the doing, but in the receiving, that's how we start by, to create. The doing of the creating of the environment starts with the receiving. Oh, and I love uh, that. shifting internally. I, I really appreciated that. Yes. So it starts in the receiving, not the doing, when we want to create an environment which we can Mm -hmm. shine the light on the gifts that have been put into the shadow. (gasps) What a beautiful line Mm. to end on. I love that. (laughs) Thank you Mm. so much, Mm -hmm. Noemi. What a great topic, a theme, and hopefully everybody's got a little something for themselves here. Yeah, yeah. Embracing some of the things. 
Mm, thank you, Lisa. And we'll be back in two weeks on November 14th. And we'll see what what goodies are we gonna, we're going to yes. share about then. Yes, wonderful. Thank, thank you, you for everybody. joining us. Thank you. Bye, Noemi. Bye, Lisa.